Hello everybody, welcome back to Wampleville. Welcome back to Isengard. We've got ourselves some Saruman figures. These are from Diwali. Just printed these out. I do believe they're part of the latest release, so we're going to have some fun with these guys. Now we've maybe painted one or two or twelve Saruman's already. It's actually the, the GW one right there. Hey, they're Armored Wolf. Man, oh man, the... Those updates are brutal, and they don't really, I mean, what do they actually do? Now, that's the thing that really gets me, is do they actually, aside from screwing up your computer, what else do they actually do? Now, uh, this one is from Our Imprintable Terrain. Yeah, Our Imprintable, not Our Imprintable Terrain, Our in Studios. So what we're going to do is that the same uh, same floor, hey there, Landrast. I uh, hope that the NIDs, all those, uh, all that stuff is working out really well. We're going to, again, uh, we got a little Cree Bane there for him. And we'll paint the, the base up like this one here. And then we've got a little little Rohan dude right here that's about to get uh, get the kibosh there. This is uh, very fun. That's actually a shield from another... Oh gosh, I don't remember which, but they're basically Rohan proxies. Rohan proxies, which uh, actually yeah, I'm going to start getting those out here because we haven't painted enough cavalry. Right, Landrast? Now, I'm just going to continue the double experiment of the Alkids and also this uh, darker primer. So no uh, no pre-glazes on this. We'll just go direct. It's direct to video here. So Landrast, uh, is today the D or is it Saturday? I think Saturday might be your D&D &D day. But either way, I hope that uh, you have a whole bunch of fun with with all this stuff this weekend let me get this smaller one here yeah yeah let's just uh, get this going here uh, as full term oh yeah we'll just do this so as full term some of this doing this and we'll do this that's uh probably going to be green there but for right now we'll just uh here let's get some of that on his hands a little bit of this on the horsey, a little bit on this dude here, because I don't know why. Because eh, I feel like it. Just because I feel like it. Let's throw some more of that over here. I have to say, I'm kind of. It, it's it's sort of interesting, the whole no pre glaze thing. It actually means, uh, well, we, we save on makeup sponges. Whether it saves on time or not, I don't know about that. It's probably a wash. See what I did there? Huh? Wait to see. Hopefully the, the new project is kind of picking up some pace along the way there. You know what? Fine. I'm going to I'm gonna hit this thing too here. Again, these are from Diwali. I do believe this is their newest release. Here, let's get the rest of... Now, just this starting to put a little something on these here, too. Ah, well, that's good. Uh, that is good, Ryan. Yeah, I was, speaking of Christmas, I gotta get those stupid ornaments out here. Gotta start painting some ornaments. Uh, I think that's what we'll be doing on our Thursdays. We'll be painting some ornaments, because that's how we're gonna pronounce it, because absolutely no one's gonna understand what the heck I'm talking about. I'm gonna do this. Clean this up a little more, cause reasons. Ah, yeah, sure. Which, uh, let's hit this guy some more too, cause I have to say I'm gonna try doing this some more. Maybe I'll do this on some of the. Well, I'm gonna do it on that Morrigan figure. So that's uh, that's the one I'll be doing tomorrow on stream. That should be pretty interesting, I'm thinking. Uh, yeah, you know what? We'll just keep going with this uh, with this lighter color again. There's no pre-glaze for it to mix into. It's just part of our little experiment here. Still waiting on this, guys. Uh, now it is, it's getting, believe it or not, it is actually clearer than it was yesterday, especially over here. Right, so I think there were fewer layers of it over there, but again, this is just—it's going to take a while for that to 
turn clear. Hey there, Halligan. So Halligan, uh, eh, wait a little bit. Now, not quite as many folks here, but wait a little bit to show off your your newest painting creation there, which as of as of course is fantastic. But uh, yeah, these are no longer blank canvas miniatures. They're not. Uh, the opportunity disappears with every brush stroke, right? Uh, right, Landrast. <laughs> uh, opportunity fades with every stroke of the brush. Yeah, I'm just doing this. We're gonna darken down Mr. Horsey here, cause reasons. Uh, what is it? To, oh, from the the was it? To, oh, the humanity. <laughs> that that uh, if if uh, Landrast were uh, a news anchor narrating this like the Hindenburg reporter was, he would say, "Oh, the humanity." Uh, so uh, yeah, I think uh, well, yeah, no, uh, hell again, wait a little bit longer. Same thing, Ryan. Just uh. Wait till there's some more folks in the chat. Now, I have to say that of all of the Lord of the Rings sculptors, there is one that does horses in their most realistic way. That would be Diwali. Yeah, so if they've got a sniper, that's the thing that can get spotters. That's the thing that can get your LMG or your your non-com or something like that. So, yeah, you're gonna, you will want to watch out for that. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Halligan. Appreciate that. Uh, oh, so uh, now Grand Oracle. I don't know if you were here at the very, very, very beginning, but uh, this we're continuing with the driest pre glazes ever, as in just that dark primer and just uh, doing the dry brushy thing over the top, just to see what happens. And uh, Grand Oracle, I think you saw that I picked up the figures from last night's stream, and the the object source lighting areas where it's the brightest, that's still, that is still very much wet. So the Elkids didn't have a super effect on that because, well, we didn't directly mix them. So, uh, well, Grand Oracle, it's getting to be uh, Black Friday real soon, which uh, you know what that means. We will be trying to secure some uh, some Elkids there. Uh, so actually, hey, uh, yeah, uh, hell again, and uh, Ryan, if you guys want to share your links, there's definitely more folks in the uh, chat now, or are more folks watching. So why don't you go ahead and 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 post uh, your your fabulous Instagram links? I know uh, hell again, you got your YouTube link as well. So why don't you post that too? Okay, well, Art Michael, uh, if if you think you don't have to uh, worry about sniper, that'd be that'd be a that'd be very helpful if you didn't have to worry about the the snipers. Now, I guess uh, can you could you squeeze in a mortar team? Because an eighty-one or an eighty-centimeter mortar could be uh, could be very interesting. I mean, that is mobile artillery, right? Hey there, Gigabyte. Welcome back. I hope that you're doing really well. Hopefully your Friday was a good one. So again, these are from Diwali here, and we're just getting these getting these going. Now that's going to be some source light. Where did you go? There you are. That's what I'm looking for. We're going to do this. And this. More of this okay and that's why we didn't go too much more with that because we're trying to get ourselves a wee bit of a glow right here yes indeed because he might turn him into something unnatural right here <laughs> Look at this. It's almost like we did do pre-glaze because there's uh, there's paint on the brush. Uh, 
Ah, the, the ye old second lieutenant. Uh, or to Michael, uh, you know, to please let me know uh, how that all goes. And geez, I don't know if you can, if you can even squeeze in a few picks or something like that. It's it's been quite some time since I've seen seen me some bolt action, so uh, I wouldn't mind seeing some of that. Right here, let's get this a little, little more of our light right here, especially right around that, and maybe even up a little bit on the face, not the face. Let's get the lightest end on our little bean sprout over here, and some of that over here, like so. All right, where's uh, something we could use as a blend like this right here? Yeah, Sarge, that's uh, that also not going to be super helpful for miniatures, is it? So sorry that, uh, well, it's kind of the way of things, right, Sarge? It's like, ah, oh, finally we got this thing settled. To which the universe says, oh, wait a minute, you thought I was done with you? You you really thought that I was done playing with you like a chew toy? Yeah, storage. Uh, like like I said, that's gonna make it. That does make it really, really, really tough to focus on much of anything. That's for sure. Now, it, hopefully, that's why you were able to uh, am scray from the job a early a. Boy, that pig Latin is just all over the place tonight. Oh, fine. Let's just keep going with our fast mat white here. Just like in the vids, right? What's the first thing we got to do? We have to uh, we got to establish any kind of object source. If we're going to put that in there, we got to get that established right quick. And uh, that uh, that kind of is getting established really quickly there. And well, Sarge, uh, again, sorry that you have to also uh, mess around with that too. Again, finally, after getting some things resolved there. Although I guess, <laughs> you know, in the in the in the grand scheme of everything, could definitely be worse. It would be. Worse having to deal with that and the strike thing too, so I suppose that that's kind of how I've had to look at things there, Sarge. It's like, well, it actually could have been worse. E even with the, the car thing, you know, what if we had to go to do a chemo session because that's what we were doing on Wednesday mornings? Or what if it happened while we were at one of those? So there's there's always a situation where something could have actually uh, been more of a snafu. Now we will be doing some of our uh, we'll be coming back into that with some uh, little pin line washy glazy things. For right now, though, I'm just trying to again establish uh, this glow really quick. It happens really fast, doesn't it, Grand Oracle? Shockingly fast. I mean, you, you could tell by the look on the Weeping Angel's face just how shocking it is. So, yeah, somebody right here, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe he's going to get turned into, uh, well, who knows. Not sure what he might get turned into again, but it's going to be something unpleasant, that's for sure. Uh, well, actually, uh, I don't know, uh, Grand Oracle, I, I, you know, it's not like our phones or anything like that are, are actually listening to every single word that we say. And we've only been talking about Dick Blick already the entire stream, so I'm thinking I'm going to blame that. I'm going to blame that for sure. That it's, uh, it's our devices listening to everything that we say. Here, let's throw a little bit of our... Lending brush action into this. 
like so so again there's a, a wee bit of a uh, wee bit of light now emanating from this yeah grand oracle it just it blew the eyebrows uh, right off just blew them right off of there hate when that happens right Again, just using the blending brush over here do I have ah there's my blue light special so it does actually uh, reach some points over here maybe even the tail yeah that uh, look at that that is uh, that's some precision brushwork right there that uh, is precision brushwork. There we are. Uh, yeah, let's uh, throw in a little bit more of our light in some of these areas here, real quick. Now we need to get some darks there, but let, let's do this side over here and let's. Uh, oh, she was completely forgot some of that right there. So best of luck on Monday there, Sarge. Wow, look at the... Ah, you can't really see it, but this stuff does come out like cottage cheese. Actually, uh, Grand Oracle, it, it, you've noticed the same thing, right? That it just, it's like, it comes out of there like cottage cheese. All right, look at this. We got some stuff here that's kind of almost on the yellowish side. Going to grab me a little bit of the... Come on, there's some of our... Wait, we want to get this, uh, start warming this up just a smidge. Here's a little VDB just to neutralize that a little bit. Let's just keep breaking this down. There we go. So Grand Oracle, all the other ones are basically the same deal. Same deal, it just, uh, it's really, uh, really like cottage cheese. Now the the CAS alkids uh, I didn't necessarily see that quite so much. Uh, well, that well, that's really cool, Grant. What did you uh, what discovery did you make there, Grant Oracle? Because any any discovery in that area is going to be kind of a kind of a critical one. So, yeah, any any info or data that you have. That would be fantastic to know. Well, Grand Oracle, I mean, we've got the, uh, I mean, we have the CAS Alkids. We've got the Griffins. And hopefully, eventually, we got our own, right? Hopefully, we have Grand Oracle Alkids and Wappleville Alkids and all that kind of stuff. Oh, wait, it has about, okay, that is off. Uh, so, uh, Grand Oracle found some one-ounce bottles that have a very thin metal tip. Okay, we're just going to take this, and now at this point, it's like we actually did pre-glaze this. We, we have reached a point now where it's almost like we have a de facto pre-glaze here. Uh, yeah, let me just start to get some of our warmer light color in here ah that 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 sounds interesting there grant oracle once again using our blending brush oh look at that <laughs> again don't blink don't blink because otherwise you're going to miss something Oh, look at that. Again, more precision brushwork there. More absolute precision brushwork. Look at that. Blending brush, taking it to all this. Push that up this way, spread it out this way, and that way. So again, that's starting to get the built up a little bit too. Uh, 
Uh, uh, yeah, Grand. What was the, oh, that's right. I, my my new batch is super good. I forgot how much I love this stuff. I completely forgotten that this, ironically enough, was my favorite super glue ever. So we're going to be, uh, I'm so glad that I have containers of that again. Here, let's get some more of our lightest, well, almost lightest light. We could still go lighter than that. Certainly need some of that up here. Blending brush, because blending brush. Believe it or not, all I've ever used for the, uh, is this, this is the only container that I've ever used. And you can tell it's been around a while, because it's, uh, it's been painted once or twice. It's the same, same old container that we've been using for quite some time. All right, again, let's get our blending brush into this, like so. Let that creep down into some of the shadow areas, too. Actually, having some small funnels, that's, uh, that also sounds pretty neat. Let's get some of the hair also here. We'll just, once again, grab our blending brush for that. Let's lighten up his uh, elbow and such. Continuing to utilize the blending brush. Over here too. Now let's compare this to our our other Sauron. So you can see just how much lighter he has gotten. He has definitely gotten lighter. See if I can get a little bit of the light on his here over here. Horsey's eyes. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do the whole textured claw thing. Maybe we will. Maybe we will. Okay, fine, we'll do the textured claw thing. We done it all the other Saruman, so we'll do it on this guy too. Don't want him to feel bad or left out. Hey there, Uber Yeti. Nice to see you. Happy Friday to you, of course. And here's hoping that your Friday was uh, was glorious. Let me, yeah, let's continue the light of his hair a little bit further here. And remember, we can still actually go lighter than this. Already going to start thinking about some of the texture here then. That's what we want to do. Let's start giving that a little bit of a thought here. Also, shield down here. I oh, absolutely love these shields. Again, I forget uh, which place does these, but it's essentially Rohan proxies. Really nifty stuff. Ah, that's... Uh, is that this stuff uh, right here? I know there's a few different types of it, but these... Uh, <laughs> remember, this just kept coming... Uh, containers of that they would be giving it to us for free every time we made an order uh, i think that was a couple of years ago so literally every time you'd place an order with dick blick there'd be another one of those jars
So yeah, I haven't used it or anything like that. It's it's just they kept sending it. Let me see if I can't get a little bit more of the you know, lighter stuff here. Then we'll start doing a little bit of color changey type stuff as well. Let's see if we can start getting some of the armor on him. And now let's just start doing some of our little darker uh, glazy things here. Hey there, Draka. Nice to see you again. Why, well, Draka, it's been a little while. I hope that everything's going great. Yeah, great to see you again. So a little bit of that Indian yellow. Okay, more of the Indian yellow then. And then a little touch of the S. Fultum just to make... There we go. Okay. Didn't want that to be too much of like our Dunlending green. Alright, so we'll just hit this. In a few places here. Let's get the cloak. Maybe not too much there. Oh, yeah, this too. So, sort of a bit of a pin line washy thing happening right here. Yeah, a little bit of Rohan action right there. Hey there, Judge Dredd. Uh, Judge Dredd, uh, now if you did want to post some uh, some links there to your uh, Blood Bowl stuff, that would be sensational too. Uh, yeah, let's use our Mars black stuff here. It's going to get some more thinner into this. And then we'll hit uh, some of this on the base here. We'll spread out some more of our source lighting there, too. So everybody, please check out the Instagram link that Judge Dredd posted. So Judge Dredd, glad that that's been, well, uh, that project has been advancing for you. Back to that green again, even more thinner. A little more. Then you see, all I do is just touch the brush there. That that's it. So all I can do is just touch the brush there. Let it do all the rest. And then that's uh, that's it. Uh, we'll see you later there, Draco. Again, uh, appreciate you being here. Now let's try some of the indigo. And our Mars black. I'm just going to, well, not exactly Mars black. That is the CAS Alkids Iron Black Oxide or whatever, which is basically Mars black. And now we're going to start getting some of the dorks on the horsey here. On the face. Over here, at least there's no tongues hanging out here, like on all the old Perry Brothers horses. So the only ones that I've really used is, is just the, the black. I haven't had a chance to use the Napthal Red yet. But at least uh, the black seems to be working out okay. What was... Or maybe it was just those two. I think that's all it was, was just those two. And again, I haven't had a chance to use the Naphthal Red yet. Yeah, and this, uh, this is a very long experiment, and we're only just now getting started with it. This is quite literally the opening round of the experiment. Which is, which is fun, because that means there's uh, so much more that we can discover along the way here. Let's 
No, 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 no. Let's do this. Let's get a little of that. No, let's try some of the Prussian blue here. It's going to be a little bit on the dingier side, but I think that that's what we want to see here. Is something a little more like this. Okay, where's my blending brush? Well, it's a micro blending brush. Now, Grand Oracle, I could swear that I had also ordered Van Dyke Brown. I'll have to look. Maybe, maybe I didn't. Maybe then I'll just have to arrive then with, say, the. Here, let's use this bigger blending brush. Maybe that's just gonna have to come with our, our Black Friday stuff. Okay, now uh, you know what? Let me take a little more thinner to that. And let's uh, get darken some of these shadow areas here, because they are shadow areas. This too. Because you must have dark to show the light. All right, I think we got a fair amount of our darks everywhere else. Let me see what we can do now on Saruman's face here. Is this, uh, I think this is the one we wanted. Yeah, Grand Org, I'll just, I'll have to look. I thought for sure that that was supposed to be in my cart. But again, I didn't. Uh, I didn't get one. Maybe it. Maybe it never ended up in there. I just remember the the Windsor. You know what uh, Steelus said about the Windsor Newton Van Dyke Brown. So maybe the maybe I ended up not getting that, just because of what Steela had said about it. And let's oh here let's do the and you have to let me know what you what you find out then about the uh, the Windsor Newton or the Griffin Van Dyke Brown if it's kind of along the same vein as uh, what we discovered about the regular Van Dyke Brown or maybe it is different. Now on these I am going to try and I'll probably take the. Uh, RS full to mix it with maybe some of the fast matter, whatever, on some of the the reins, bridles, and straps. Not really going to do a whole bunch with any sort of uh, freehand type things. Oh, no, no, no. Back to our to our blue here if we're going to do anything like that oh here let's get some of that down in the shadow areas here in a couple of places well that was a little more thinner than what i wanted to have there darken that down on that side Yeah, Grand Oracle. It definitely was very, uh, it was very much on the warm side. I remember Stila talking about that. All right, now we're now we're starting to work some of this. Can that darker blue here? Onto his face, maybe even into the hair a little bit more here. Over there too. And we can still lighten this up even, even more here. Fast matte white. We start to break that down here. A 
And again, some of that gets even, even later. Get a little bit of on his fingers, perhaps. You can still add more of this to the to the horse and some of the reins here. Also to the saddle and the saddle blanket. Now, uh, thanks, Hell again. Appreciate that. Oops, that doesn't go there. That doesn't go over there. We're gonna get rid of that. We are gonna lighten this a little more, though. Like so. And uh, again, what is this? Uh, 45 minutes ago. Once again, no paint on uh, either one. No paint whatsoever. More of our... And that's going to now start to hit the face and the beard. And the mustache. Oh, hell again, that'll be very fun. Man, looking forward to seeing pictures of those. Now, hell again, it's not exactly a monumental weekend in college football, although it could be. There's, there's, if some kind of weird disasters happen or something like that, that is definitely going to have a massive impact because, again, they're games that teams should be winning. So if there are upsets, upsets on uh, this Saturday, that's going to have a massive impact. There were many references to, was it, that Admiral Akbar guy and the whole It's a Trap? Because there's a number of trap games this weekend. Okay, and we'll get uh, a little bit more of the Light on his beard here. Okay, yeah, this just gets some of that light too. Also, the cheekbone here. Maybe even the even stuff like the the bridles and the reins and everything. It's just more, just more realistic from Diwali than from other from other folks. It is much more realistic on the horses. Now, how again? Actually, if they win that game, they are going to uh, they're going to Indianapolis, right? That's that's basically it. They have to win that game, or that they already secure the West. I'm not sure. Oh, that that also uh, is going to catch some more of our light there too. Might spread a little bit more of that down here on the uh, on poor hapless little Rohan guy laying on the ground. Now it's the Uber Yeti, <laughs> Grand Oracle. That's uh, that's not the place you would have expected a pun challenge to come from, but the first pun challenge of the evening has been issued by Uber Yeti. So, again, it is, uh, it's always open mic night here at uh, the Wappleville Comedy Club. No, 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 no. Let's get a little bit of our, yeah, a little something more besides just the, the white there. Yeah, oh, yeah, we need a little bit of that over here, too.
I'll even thin it down a little bit. So that we can do something like this here. Okay, and uh, yeah, uh, we should get a little bit more of that blue over here. And it does extend out here. Now we're going to be putting a bunch of uh, flower slash grass stuff and stuff on this. So again, not going to paint this too too detailed here. Uh, all right, Grand Oracle, no problem, no problem, Grand Oracle. Thanks for being here as long as you could, and thank you so much for the hype train. Thanks for furnishing that, and I hope that you have yourself a. Uh, a good a good time there and good luck with the swimming try and get this up a little bit more of that okay and we did need a little more over here too and that's got some of the blue in it now let's see so yeah, okay, they win that, uh, win and they're in. Oh, that's right. Uh, yeah, sorry, hell again, I keep forgetting it's not, you know, someone else maybe has a, a, a decent uh, conference record there. Maybe, uh, maybe a bunch of losses elsewhere, but uh, you could be a 5-5 five and five team, but still have, say, a... I don't know, three and two record in the conference or whatever, and that might be close enough to get you an appearance in Indianapolis. I, I'm just assuming that's where the game is still going to be played, right, uh, Halligan? Now that's got a little bit of a... Uh, almost a bit of the yellowish-brown to it. Let me try and lighten that up a little more here. Like right there. Ah, uh, yeah, that side of the blanket over there. Give that a little bit of a tint of something that's not quite the blue. Uh, so, Loki, that is a... Uh... Oh, that's... I'll have to go back to the store again tomorrow to, to get some more, but that is my blackberry ginger ale mixed with rum. Yes, I have to see if I can find some more of my blackberry ginger ale at the store tomorrow. Today it was all about securing things like the uh, cranberries to be able to make the cranberry sauce. This is a cuisine channel after all. So I got those and then there was a few other... Oh, and some, uh, some stuffing type things. Because we do want to make that last... Uh, well, another one of those uh, big old chickens there in the slow cooker don't think we'll be doing that on Saturday even gonna get some of this yellow up here into the uh, the cloak there uh, so it's uh, nothing nothing super fancy on that it's just uh, some cracking and it's, it's not the spiced rum version, it's kind of the regular Kraken because, uh, well, that's uh, that's got the 94 proof, whereas the uh, the spiced rum version is only about 87 or 70-something, whatever. So, yeah, we went for the not spiced rum just to have a little bit more, a little bit more of our medicine there, some more powerful medicine. Again, we don't enjoy our medicine. It's uh, something that we only do for the good of the stream, of course. It's only for the good of the stream. It keeps the voice going. So we, you know, we, we just kind of, we'll, we'll suffer along with it. Because that, that's what you do. You make sacrifices. Speaking of wit here, let's uh, make that a little darker now too, yeah? Uh, so, uh, Artem Michael, uh, 
Now, oh, that's right. Well, this there's no pre-orders for uh, Old World stuff this Saturday, is there? Now, I, I can't imagine that they wouldn't want to time something like that with the holidays. I mean, heaven forbid, right? Uh, unless maybe they are. Uh, so Halligan, my sister, she wanted to do a very small little gathering. It uh, so will be my brother Lou, my brother Frank, and myself over there. And she's doing a small turkey. But I just thought that, uh, well, I usually, traditionally what we would do is we would make cranberry sauce and we would bring that. That was usually our thing that we would bring. Now my brother Lou is probably going to be bringing all kinds of stuff down from Wisconsin, like he tends to do, unless he doesn't have time to do that on the way down. But uh, I still want to make that chicken hell again. And we were talking yesterday, uh, I was hoping to do something maybe a little bit different this time, maybe do something like a cream of mushroom soup with it, <clears throat> something like that. Now, Art and Michael, those sacrifices, I think that's going to have to be for our Saturday challenges, right? Still got to figure out how the heck the, I don't know, maybe I'll just have something prepared, like literally on a plate or something, so that I can just uh, kind of run, microwave that real quick, snarf it down, and, and then we continue, kind of like our old Saturday challenges. Again, with uh, without the second person there to try and make a make that that does hinder the process. So again, this is a little bit of the a uh, little bit of the radiant magenta into it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, no, that is blocked off. Okay, so that is not going to get any of the bluish light anyways. I don't know. What are we doing here with his scared little face here? <clears throat> uh, so, Loki, what I've been doing is... Uh, Utilizing the slow cooker about once a week, usually on Sunday or Monday, and, and either it's either a roast or lately some sirloin tips or one of these chickens, and that feeds me for about five ish days or so, which is uh, really cool. We have someone that, that sends the uh, the glorious uh, meat crate every eight weeks, I think, every two months. So again, just uh, getting that glow established right here. And of course, uh, we always have our the oracle of the flashlight, right, that kind of determines some of that. So yeah, hell again, I might just uh, start, well, getting a few cans of that. And maybe we'll uh, stick that into the uh, slow cooker with with said chicken and see what all happens. Uh, now, remember, we have been getting all of those uh, people had sent us those uh, curry uh, things, those curry sauce things. We've been using those. I still have a couple of those left. There's also a little bit of a variety in those. A few different uh, flavors there. All right, again, starting to think about some of our texture over here, too. Yeah, Horns fan, the, of course, again, Alabama has that, that legendary matchup against Chattanooga this weekend. Once, yeah, that, that's a rivalry that goes down through the ages. Uh, I mean, you know what? His uh, his feet are actually he doesn't have dark boots on. He actually has uh, basically kind of white shoes. Either that, I think in the movies he might have actually had sandals. Uh, yeah, 
what this is here. Let's continue to lighten that up a bit while we're at it here. Then uh, let me see. Oh, 80 minutes ago, these had no paint on them whatsoever. Now, what's in now? Uh, Horns fan, are they? A, they must be a D2 school or something like that, because they are eight and two, or eight, eight, nine and one, something like that. So I think that's one of those things where a D2 school is just gonna try and make a little bit of extra cash, play Alabama, something like that. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, we have to get the darker, like his eyes and such in there too, but I'm actually going to move down to the shield here, get some of the, some more lights on this. Not going to rust up that shield because there he is right over there. Uh, Horns fan, I would certainly like to see relegation in the NFL. And there's a franchise right here in town that I would love to see relegated. Uh, <laughs> Actually, I would like to see all the franchises here in town relegated in all sports. It does kind of motivate you to actually stay competitive, right, Horns fan? None of this... Uh, no tanking. I mean, talk about, it seems like in every sport, at least a third of the teams in every league are tanking. Or at least semi-tanking. Yeah, Horns fan. Every single one of them could be relegated. Teach them a lesson. All right, let, uh, let's get some more of our light over here, and then I might have to come back again, or let's might be able to see a little bit better here, so you can see there's a bunch of different colors in there, not just not just white. Same thing here. Look, you've got some. There's actually a little bit of greenish color in there. There's some reddish browns and such. Let me try and. A little more of the light here on his beard. His lips there, even his chompers. Maybe a little bit more on the hair here. Now let's throw some over there. Okay. Uh, the revenue sharing, that's it. That that was kind of the worst thing to ever happen to sports, well, at least professional sports, because it basically eliminates all desire to have a competitive team. Uh, there wins. So I'm going to just uh, use this to get... Uh, Little bit of definition between the hair and the cloak. And now we're really starting to maybe suggest some of that texture here on his cloak. Ah, uh, so uh, that, that light dusting just puts you over the top there, uh, Armored Wolf. So, and now. Let's see, it's only the 17th, so you got 13 days to get up over 40. Ah, uh, here we go. Well, of course, uh, some fans just want to see Blood Bowl. Who wouldn't want to see uh, those goblins, secret weapons, and the chaos dwarves? Uh, yeah, you trade the NFL for Blood Bowl. I think a whole bunch of folks would be up for something like that. 
I bet you the ratings would be a whole bunch higher. Let's throw some more of our dark over here. And then we'll get some more some more lights on the horsey too. Uh why don't we do that? Why don't we do that now? Let's let's give uh this a little chance to set and let's throw some of this here. Let me I'm gonna have to get some more of the I almost said radiant white. Now, I have not tried the radiant white yet. Nope, I haven't tried that yet. And we might even throw a little bit of a fur texture here from our... Uh, not going to do it like the... Oh, what is this? Our, our Candish Horseman. No, not going to be quite that much fur texture. Different, uh, different types of horses here. All right, trying to get kind of a warm-ish gray here. It's almost kind of a violet gray. Uh, let me use this little bit of a blending brush here. So yeah, the just the blandness Every team pretty much looks exactly the same. They run the same offense, the same defense. Even the stadiums all look exactly alike. So maybe a little bit of Blood Bolt might just be the thing. In those warmer climates, you'll have your Amazon teams. You can uh, there's Norse teams, so uh, well, plenty of climates here for a Norse team. And well, and with Chicago, you could just have an underworld team. There you go. Now, maybe I I might come back in to this with a little mix of say the. Uh, some Van Dyke Brown, Indigo, whatever, to really get some super strong darks into the, onto the horsey here. I'm going to play a little bit more with, uh, this is just mid-tones here. This is not, this is not a highlight highlight. It's, again, if, if you're talking about a 1 to 10 value scale, you're looking somewhere in the neighborhood of 4, 5-ish, something like that. Uh, Horns fan, I do think, uh, well, no, I, I think they, oh, what is it called? The Norse team at the Ulfwarner or something like that. It's sort of like a bear type of critter almost. I don't know, kind of like, I guess more like a Yeti, I suppose. No, no, that is getting to be a little bit of a lighter gray right there. A little bit lighter gray on our horsey here. That, yeah, let's get some of that up here. But it's nowhere near as, uh, nowhere near as light as that, though. Yeah, so Uber Yeti, I keep, uh, oh boy, do we have. I don't even know if I still have them here on the. Yeah, what are the oh, the. All oh, those walruses. That's right. Actually, we gotta. I gotta print some of these up again. Uh, to, oh, these. Oh, the. Yeah, there, there's the polar bears. That's right. We painted those uh, a couple of winters ago. Yeah, maybe we'll try and get some of those printed out again. So yeah, Horns fan, I think, uh, well, they always talk about bear weather here. Now, of course, you know, if, uh, if it's warm enough, it also could be bear weather, but a different kind of bear. 
Gonna get me a little bit more of the light up there. Also on his leg here. So trying for a little different, uh, again, this is a warmer gray here. Fine, we'll throw a little bit more of that on the belly over there. Never really did anything on this leg. We'll get some over there too. Now let's bring it over this way. Get some of this sort of a mid-tone gray, very much on the warmer side of things here. Get something a little lighter on the back of his ears. No, 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 no. Let's back up a little bit there. Blending brush again. So I think, uh, was it 11 a.m.? Things kick off. And then, well, this Friday will be, well, A&M. So a week from today. Made that go a little bit further here with the, again, this is the fast matte white, very, very uh, neutral gray here. Got some of the Van Dyke brown in it. And uh, like I mentioned before, we'll come back with our blending brush and we'll tone down some of the uh, fur texture that we're putting in here. Uh, so Valfera, something like this is very much a warm gray because there's a little bit of magenta in it. So the gray, if you've got something that's a bluish gray like the indigo, well, that's going to be a cooler gray color. If you have something that, say, you, you mixed a little bit of uh, maybe yellow ochre with it or something like that, or even you know, something then like, a, like a magenta or whatever, that's going to be a warmer gray. So you have warm colors, right? Uh, reds, yellows, even even some brighter greens. Those can be warmer colors. You mix those with something like, say, a Van Dyke brown or even a black or whatever. Now you're going to have yourself some warmer grays. So Landrast, uh, yeah, uh, is, uh, is the big critter something along the lines of like a Necro Sphinx or a War Sphinx or something like that? You know, the thing that they never made, well, let me see if I can scroll up here. They never did make the Colossus or the Hyro Titan. So, yeah, those were the guys up on top there that I had to sculpt myself because they never made those. Now, that was a big old conversion, but there we go. So that's that's the War Sphinx. Uh, I don't know if they made anything like that, but uh, the, this is, there we go. That's the one with the Hyro Titan and the Colossus that I sculpted there. I'm guessing that, uh, you know, obviously 3D printing wise, somebody's maybe done something like those. Now, thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting the link to the GoFundMe campaign. Again, uh, a few folks have contributed to that this week, which is uh, super, super helpful. Again, with the, with the loss of the vehicle because of the theft, we really do appreciate that. Now, Valfira, it's, uh, I'll never forget back, you know, this is when we we're using just your GW paints and such. And they had, they had this color, it's called Fortress Gray, which was, was almost in some ways a pinkish gray, so kind of a warm gray. And then they had something else that was a Space Wolves Gray, which again is kind of an ice blue gray. Well, that's a cooler gray. And that was the first time I really started to think about 
you know, warmer grays, cooler grays. Uh, Landrest, I'm pretty sure that one page rules did something like a war sphinx. Because what's his name? Luke's from Luke's AB. Now he printed that out. Of course, it was really tiny because he likes to play, I guess, the 15 mil or 10 mil or whatever. But yeah, there was. Uh, OPR does have something like that. And uh, actually, Bithron was saying that OPR has a. I think their Black Friday sale. I think it might have already started. Uh, so Armored Wolf says that GW has, uh, they, they got uh, giant, skelly, croco dragons. Uh, so Grand Oracle, hopefully victory was achieved. Or at least success in some way, shape, or form. Thanks for, for joining us again. Hey there, Denethor. How you doing? Thanks for being here again. Uh, so Dennis, what where's the uh, here he is? So we're uh, cranking out a couple of more Saruman figures here. These are from Diwali. Uh, so Dennis, I hope that you're doing really well. Uh, these were of the darker primer variety here. We're uh, didn't do the pre-glaze. Part of it, again, was there were some things that I knew were going to be fragile on both of these. So didn't want to mess around too much with that. So the uh, the, the War Sphinx and the Necro Sphinx, those were fairly big. I think they also have, oh gosh, were they the Sepulchre Serpents or something like that? That was another thing that was in the army, and I remember painting up those. So great to see you again there, Denethor. Again, I hope that you're doing really well. Let me get some of my Van Dyke Brown here. And some of the indigo together with that. And let's uh, let's go back to some darker stuff now. Just breaking these down a little bit of thinner. Let's break these down. And then there we go. Look at that. So some very dark shadow colors in there. And that's going to just start to blend with everything that we already have here. Yeah, Landress, uh, I think, uh, well, I think I convinced Bithron to just, uh, you know, if they have a a release that you're interested in, just you know, do that one month, and then just uh, go for that. You don't have, you know, he's not going to be interested in long stay rewards or anything like that. Like uh, we kind of are more interested in those. Uh, well, Denethor, uh, some some interesting news. The folks from Medusa Project, they. They got in touch with me, and, well, I already have a couple of more of the Wraith files, but uh, whatever ones are left, I think I'll be getting those, plus also uh, uh, some other, oh, that's right, well, more bears, because we don't have enough bears. Holy smokes, I actually printed out, no, this not, that was from this, was it the previous month with all the bears from Diwali? No, this is actually, uh, this might have been the October release here. Maybe I'm thinking about this wrong, and it's the bears. Yes, it's the bears that are the uh, November release. Well, those are already printed up, too. And I <laughs> I already have, like, a, a million bears between ones that are printed up and uh, also... Let's see, who else has some bears? I think actually someone sent me one of the GW bears. Yeah, I think uh, I think they were bearing down in the. Uh, I think that's their newest release. They were they were bearing down this month, not so much last month. I think that that's what, what this is from here. 
Oh well. Uh, Uber Yeti, unfortunately, there was only huh, there was that one early on that was I think about two years ago, and they decided to ditch that project. Since then, sadly, nobody has uh, nobody has approached me. You would kind of think so, but nope. <laughs> Because uh, miniature companies keep trying to release oil paints that fail because, well, they're no good. Because they have no idea what it really takes to do miniature painting with the oils. Their oils are basically made to be like, well, here, it's going to be like glorified vehicle weathering paints. Instead of actual just paints. So I think what's going to happen is they'll just, they'll, they'll kind of, they'll do everything, you know, try to do those, they'll fail, and they say, ah, see, nobody's going to buy oil paints. Kind of the self-fulfilling prophecy sort of thing. Uh, actually, Valfira, do you remember, oh gosh, what were they? They were from uh, Song of Ice and Fire, and they were the free folk. Yeah, I remember they were riding those polar bears. We actually painted those up on stream. That's right. Yeah, the polar bear riding, uh, whatchamacallit, guys, from uh, from Song of Ice and Fire. Uh, yeah, Denethor, that's an old, expensive metal one there. Now, I still haven't had a chance to search for it. I guess I got very distracted when I saw the Radagast figure. But yeah, we still have to, uh, still got to do that search for uh, uh, Gandalf and his cart. Let's see if we can give this guy an eye right there. And there. Hey there, Blades. How you doing? Everybody, please give Blades a follow. So, Blades, I hope that your stream went really well. And, Blades, if there's anything that you wanted to post in chat or anything like that, please go ahead and do so. Glad that you're doing well. i darken that down a bit. Let me see if I can get a little more of the... Uh, green down here as well. So yeah, Uber Yeti, it's just uh, the, the way they, they approach it is that the oils are just a supplement to acrylics instead of, well, you can just paint the whole thing with the oils. And of course, there's things like the interference colors, there's the there's the metallic stuff that you could do with the oils. There's the fluorescence that you could do. So there's plenty of stuff that you could do with the oils. It's just, well, again, their their whole approach is, well, you're just going to use these to supplement acrylic stuff. And as long as they have that kind of limited uh, viewpoint there, that's not really going to... That's not going to bring up the, the interest level the way it needs to be. So, Blades, if you wanted to share anything in chat, please go ahead and do so. Appreciate you being here, as always. Now, Uber Yeti, I guess the other thing, too, is that uh, there's so many of the, the stereotype things. Right? Oh, it needs all those solvents and things and all this other kind of stuff. And people have it in their mind that it's all this super nasty whatever. When we know it's not, right, Duber Yeti? Okay, we'll just leave it, leave it like that. I actually take some of this here, yellow, and we'll try to use this to lighten up the green a bit more here. Also warm that up. Yeah, Grand Oracle, it really is, right? Because all we have is that uh, 
And the the brush cleaner that I use, oh, gee whiz, look at this. Dried acrylic and oil paints, not hazardous, no vapors. I'm going to throw a little bit of that green over here too, just because. Same here. Let me see if I can now get a little bit more of the light on his rope. Now let's go back to the darker stuff here. That would be a little bit of our Van Dyke brown now. Ain't that the truth, Grand Oracle? I mean, there's been times, and it was only just, I think, maybe last week, where I walked up to the table and went, oh, I never cleaned the brushes from last night. Completely forgot. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. Oh, that geez, I gotta break out that nativity scene. I had to figure out where the heck that is. That's right. I, I that was uh, something that I wanted to paint last last Christmas. I gotta find that thing. Yeah, let me see if. Let me see if I can darken this down a little. Yes, I can. Blending brush to that. Like so. Let me grab a little more of the yellow here. Some of that fast matte white. Break that down a little more. Yet another different color here. And again, also the, do a little bit of the... We're trying to put some of that texture there in the fabric, I guess. So now we can really start adding some of the little, little dots and such like this. Especially now that some of the darks are in place. Ah, oh, geez, I didn't know that Reaper had one of those. Um, the one that I printed out, it was very simple. It was just the big three with the... And kind of like a, almost a, a little bit of a cave type of a thing. But it did have some object source lighting in it because it had a, a little fire going. So who knows? Maybe, maybe we can try and uh, get uh, that painted up on a stream. Let me fire in here some more of my light and again uh, doing the little bit of a tap 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 here trying to create that that bit of texture in the cloak even though it really shouldn't be not at this scale unless this cloak was uh, made out of some really heavy fabric. And let me break this uh, fast mat weight down a little bit more here. Oh yeah, we got not much of anything going on here. Sheep, I was about to come back in there with some more of our darks too. I think yeah, let's uh, let's do that too. Also, have to think about uh, any sort of shadow that might be cast by by this source light over here. In fact, Prussian blue. Okay, we got this over here. We'll just use this. Let's keep in mind, I don't care that he's wearing, he's got a white cloak on or something like that. Put on a white t-shirt or a sweatshirt or something like that. Go into a dark room or at least a moderately you know, not a sunlit room or something like that, and shine a flashlight on that white shirt, and you'll see that, okay, where the flashlight's hitting it, that is light. Everywhere else, not so much. Let 
Now here I'm going to also uh, do a little bit of tap, tap, tap here to try and generate a little bit of the uh, texture. Uh, let me thin this down a bit and resurrect some of this over here. Once again, this is that sort of demarcation line between where the object's source lighting is and our shadow uh, takes over and then the ambient light begins. So that, that okay, yeah, here too. Oh, let's continue to darken this up some more. Almost thinking like a shadow over here. So we need we need a little bit of dark before we start getting back into the ambient light over there. Oh, and by the way, less than two hours ago, we are working on two of these here. Neither of those figures had any paint on them. Okay, let's get some more of our dark over here too. That's uh, mostly just the Prussian blue mixed with a little whatever there. And where's my micro blending brush? That's this thing right here. Okay, a little bit of tap, tap, tap right there. Uh, we'll just throw some shadow over here too. Ah, Werner Clock. I always, uh, always enjoyed Werner sculpts because, well, you could uh, the the faces were kind of uh, a little bit bigger on those, so you could actually get some really interesting. But actually, this is uh, where the heck did it go? Ah, is it over here? There it is. This is a. Uh, yeah, that's, a, that's an old Werner clock sculpt right there. That's a really old one. Uh, that goes back a little ways for sure. And, and he's still doing Freebooter, right, uh, Grand Oracle, I think so. I know he actually sort of did a game or whatever. I mean, not... Uh, I forget what it was called. It was sort of like a... I think it was sort of like a pirate sort of a thing. So yeah, check out Freebooter Miniatures. That's a uh, weird clock. I really, really did enjoy his stuff too. Actually, I'm gonna get some of this green up on the cloak. It's uh, it's almost like Sauron of many colors. So we painted that. Uh, I've painted that Monique de Noir at least eight or nine times now. And then, of course, well, we painted some of the other, uh, even some of the larger scale ones. All right, I'm going to throw a little bit of the lighter green there. Look at that, even a little bit of green on the skin tone. Something up in here. There's no transition point there. We're going to try and create one here. Again, there's a lot, lots of different colors going on here. Again, it's almost like Sauron of many colors. Okay, eh, fine. I'll throw a little bit of this uh, lighter green down here on our little Rohan guy. Let's see if we can do uh, a little more on the skin here, even though it's got that source lighting. Yeah, I'm going to do the other side of his face a little bit more with the lighter blue here 
Uh, not too much, not too much, but here, let's do a little bit on this side over here. Carry that down a little. Maybe this side of his head a little bit lighter. Gotta try and give him some, some eyes here, I guess. Now I'm gonna get me some dorks on his face. Van Dyke Brown, a little bit of the indigo perhaps. Let's see, we got um, I think we've already done the eyes, but maybe not. Let me see here. No, we're gonna try and also get a little bit more of a dark in the hair. Okay, that makes a little more sense now. Let's see if we can give it. Nah. Not with this brush here. Let's go to this one instead. Thank you so much for the uh, clip there, Bisron. Appreciate that, as always. Right there. Maybe I'll try and go with a little bit more of the light on it, but first I also need to... Uh, Get this under his nose. All right, let's see if we can do a little bit more of the light on his face now. Take a little smidge of this white over here. Let's see what happens with... Nope, maybe it's not quite light enough. We'll get a little bit lighter here. And, and the next thing you know, uh, Sam's, you'll be saying, uh, you know what, that didn't quite go the way I wanted to. I'm just going to wipe that off, and I'm just going to try it again. And you won't even think twice about it. You'll have uh, a lot of flexibility. And you'll just be really, really confident about it. It just takes, uh, again, just using the medium... A few times, just kind of getting used to it and seeing what it can do. Okay, that, that, that does... You know, let me see if we've got... Uh, boy, that upper lid, I would really like to get a little more light on that. There's not much to work with there. Let's see if I can do a little something... Okay. At least now I'm kind of getting the impression that uh, his eye down there is... We, we want to have that, that expression of terror, don't we? Okay, so there's uh, there's his, his little playmate right there. You're just having some fun with him, that's all. They're just joking around, that's all. You know, we just uh, crossed that three-hour mark, so that also means that we can do uh, start to think about that brush stroke management, right? That's where we take that kind of brush and we, we go in and all we're looking to do is maybe get rid of a few brush strokes. And we do that actually by taking paint off of the miniature. We're not actually trying to blend any colors there. We're just trying to get rid of excess paint. Now, the one thing I have been noticing is with the fast mat or the, the alkyd based colors is that we can kind of do that phase a little bit sooner. Because uh, remember, the paint's not dry, the paint is set. Let me see if I can separate those fingers a little more. Looks like we did. Yeah, it's 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 kind of it's just like his version of the little the little party lights here. It's just it's it's a party party light. That's all he's doing. 
Ooh, yeah. Well, that's, uh, okay, good. Now we don't have any more of the green on that. Get some of our floral blue here. So there's some of the fluorescent blue. I just realized we wanted to almost uh, do a little bit of texture in here, too, for a shadow. Now that should be a whole lot darker. That is in shadow there. So it's another one of the little changes that we make. Again, we, we see how things are going, and we say, ah, you know what, Let, let's make a little adjustment there. Maybe we'll do some of that over here, too. So we're getting closer now to Saturday. Let's throw in a little, there we go. Let's uh, make that a bit rounder. That was kind of flat. We'll also try and darken up this edge here. So even though it's a white robe, how do we avoid object source shading? Doesn't matter if it's a white robe, there's got to be some shadows on there. Again, otherwise, you got yourself object source shading and not lighting. You must have the dark in order to show the light. Speaking of dark, we need to get a little more down here. And that's, uh, that is not black line, that's actually our blue. The same darker blue that we've been using on the sleeves and such here. Again, not just making that darker, but also uh, doing a little bit of that texturizing. Like so. Do the same down here. Now I'm going to go back to the, yeah, it's a little bit of the, well, it's not Mars black specifically. That is our iron oxide black. That is the, uh, that's the alkyd. But essentially, that that's kind of what Mars Black is. Going to dork in some of these back down again. Dork in this down. Also, we're trying to sharpen up the edge of that cloak. Oh, here's another area where we definitely need some more of the dark. Around the hair. Ah, uh, here, I'm gonna go back to the S Fulton. Yeah, too much paint on that brush, I could see that right away. All right, try and up here on the head get a few little strand. There we go. And uh, need the same on this side too. And then maybe even uh, see if I can't <clears throat> do the furrows on his brow there. Also, this I think I'm going to try and dark in this here. I'll see you later there, Sarge. Thank you so much for being here as always. Thanks for the bits too. Uh, again, glad about the resolution of the, the one thing, but uh, sorry that now there's another thing that's going to need resolution, but again, hopefully that's, uh, that'll be done much quicker than the strike. So you take care of yourself. Now, well, we'll see you tomorrow. We still, well, we still have four minutes left of Friday here. All right, that strip, I'm going to also 
clean up that edge and there's another edge down there that has to be done. Then we'll, we'll hit it again with the lightest light, but there's a couple of other areas here that I need to do with the some of our dark. I'm going to try and go a little stronger with his eye down. Okay, that's good. And we'll sharpen up the edge on the cloak and these bits of the armor here. I'm also, yeah, I need to get a little more dark here. Don't want that uh, the source light to reach too far over here. All right, now let's get some reflected light over here. I'm gonna take some of the get some of the radiant magenta. We want this to be a warmer light here. Also there, so again, just a little bit of uh, reflected light. So darker light than the dark and then a little bit lighter maybe go a little further with that here right over there now there's a little hair or something like that so we'll try this again okay good good enough there good enough and now maybe a little something on the hair and then the skin on this side of his face. Now, we never did give him, uh, well, at least not on that one side. Let's see if we can give him some darks on the face and also his eye right here. So he's kind of looking like down like that. Definitely need to sharpen up the edges around the bridle right there. Same over here. On his mouth, maybe there's some other lights we could add there. And now let's get some of our deep darks in here on this leg. That's good. Got our blue, some of the brown mixed together. That's the indigo. Hey there, Aura. How you doing? So, Aura, we've got ourselves a pair of Saruman's. Right there, and uh, three hours and 12 minutes ago, they had no paint on them whatsoever. And of course, uh, yesterday we had some fun with the uh, with the mouth of Sauron. Right there, had a blast with those. It's 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 almost like we're painting those special GW sets with the uh, with the cav and infantry options. Yeah, they're definitely sorrow many because well he's a uh, he's got sorrow of many colors so he is a sorrow many <laughs> also a sorrow of well, many sorrow minis this <laughs> and uh this is from Diwali here there are more uh, there's more Ganda. oh and I have found I have finally discovered a radagast STL and not just a Radagast STL but also a uh, Radagast writing guy here which is going to be real interesting like I said when Gandalf sees Radagast on Gua here he's going to be like wait a second how come it's okay for him but not for me so or I hope that the painting has been going well 
touch of the light out here again. That was our little party light here. So the oracle of the flashlight, even on the tail, you can see there is some of that, some of that light that reaches there. Uh, this run, it's going to be a very, I got some really fun little skits planned. So ne needless to say, this run, you might have to do one or two clips. But yeah, Radagast, and of course, uh, I still have to see, oh, that's right, I have to search for Radagast Bunny Chariot. So Gandalf's cart and see if anybody has done a Radagast Bunny Chariot. Of course, now that I actually have that one Radagast figure, I could... Where the heck are you? No, not in there. Where did you go? Oh, here you are, way the heck back here. I do believe there's at least five or six different bunnies, so we could print up some of those bunnies, and uh, we could make a chariot out of those, I, I guess. Ah, well, that's uh, that's fantastic, Aura. Actually, or if you wanted to share any of that in the in the chat there, that those some of those things you've been working on. Let's see, I'm gonna see if I can't get a little bit more of the right light here, also on his face there. No, nah, that was a little too much. I'm going to go back with the dark. Like this. Because we kind of lost that whole fearful expression in his eyes. So he's uh, he's looking very, very worried about what's, uh, what's about to happen to him here. Uh, no problem, Aura. No problem. It's, uh, I mean, all that matters is, well, having fun with them and just, uh, finding out new things. We find out new things all the time here, and they definitely help on future things. Over here. Down here. Never really did get any of that lighter stuff on the underside of his head either. It's going to take this as a blending brush there. Thank you so much, Bithron, for doing that clip. As always, appreciate that. Oh, the, thanks, Horns fan. I, was, I kept looking at that going, I think that's what you're trying to do. Thank you so much, Horns fan. Now, here's hoping again that... Uh, it's the most boring game ever. I, I think that's what you want. You want to be absolutely bored out of your mind. You don't want any theatrics. You no know, no last minute stuff. None of that. Just uh, get out in front early, and then uh, start putting in second and third stringers. That's uh, that's what you're wanting to see right there. Uh, still, still trying to figure out. Uh, I've got to find a, a site that kind of explains what the heck is going on next year with the playoff. With the actually, remember I was telling you that the folks that I had talked with it is kind of almost a bit like a conference USA now. I mean, you know when it's uh, when there's advertisements. So what is that? The uh, oh, Smalls, Smallsville, or whatever, or Fansville. That's it. You know when when they have multiple commercials that talk about conference realignment and make fun of it. That's when you know we're kind of getting crazy. Yes, uh, that is now the Pack Three, I believe. Uh, 
actually it's more like packed up and gone right horns fan i think that's the that's the official name of that conference oh you know what no no let me go back to the s fault um over here i think yeah, let's try some of this Do we want, you know what, let me try some of our bluish gray there. Yeah, let's try some of that. I think the symbol of that conference is just going to be a moving van, Horns van. Yeah, I think it's just going to be a moving van. That's <laughs> You know who's going to be the the new sponsor of the uh, Packed Up and Gone conference? I think U-Haul is probably going to take advantage of that. Uh, and they'll be the new sponsor of the Packed Up and Gone conference. That That's all you'll see is just nothing but U-Haul ads. Thank you so much, Armored Wolf, for posting a link to the GoFundMe campaign. Yeah, we appreciate all the folks that have contributed to that, especially of late with the newly arisen needs for that. So thank you so much. Oh, you know what we never did do here? We had to really separate that beard there, but I don't want to don't want to put any light over here because if we do, we, we wipe out this. Although, oops. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, we need a bunch of light over here. Let me do that before we forget here. So let me just grab this, get some of the paint out of this thing here, and we'll just have one of our paper towels ready. There we go. I just decided, let's look at this going, huh. There's a whole area there where we have none of our light. Okay, that solves that. Again, that's a, that's not an LED light. That is just we kind of balanced out our, our lights and everything with all our darks, and we did the same thing here with Saruman and his little Palantir. Now this one, that's a print from RNS Studios. Where's our other Saruman right there? So yeah, we've. Uh, been having a blast doing these guys. Uh, three hours and thirty minutes in. Let me see if I can chuck in a little bit of really dark, dark here. So a little strip of it there. Maybe even darken that a little more. Also going to try and get a little texture worked into this here. Uh, just like what we've uh, got out here. Let me see. I'm going to check my reference real quick here. Because what do we have for his... He's got some hefty eyebrows on him, doesn't he? He sure does. A little separation on his beard right there. I think even on the top of his eyeball. Okay, so we darken that, and I'm going to come back with some of my light again here. Now, now we're kind of getting into basically the straight up fast mat white here in a few places. Again, look at this. Uh, caress the brush. Do not crush the brush. I'm going to see if I can extend this right along here a little bit for that uh, furrowed brow. Get a touch more light here on the beard and maybe even his arm there. And let's a little more light on the end of his snoot there. I 
think we've made that about as light as we can. We're also going to get a little more light on the leg and maybe even the saddle blanket here. Again, that's just the fast mat weight. It's also relatively neutral. You know, I should get a little more of the light over here too. With, with the, maybe some fur texture. Where's my little flashlight here? Consult the Oracle, the flash. Oh, wow, actually, it's uh, it shows some of it going over to the other side. Okay, we kind of did that, but here, let's do a little... Uh, get that floral blue out here. Wasn't uh, really thinking of this as having quite so much of the light hitting it, but I did see some. Again, those little little party flashlights, get those off of Amazon for not much. Let's put it that way, not very much at all. Yeah, really, really cheap, I don't know, seven bucks or something like that. Really, really, really cheap. All right, let's get the, ah, here's my light. Again, some of the fast mat weight that's going to go here. We'll touch on the leg there, and then I don't think I want to do too much more with the really light. Now I'm going to put some of that over here, though. Maybe a little bit on the uh, back of his ear. Oh, this thing here, that can't be. And here we're going to tone that down, get the edge cleaned up on that. And a little bit more with the chompers there. Let's see, you know, I'm going to take some of the... Right here, let's make kind of a magenta around here. I don't want to give him red lips. No, this is kind of in the entire face here too, not just on the on where his mouth is. Uh, so Sam's mini painting, the Winton colors, those are not, those are student grade colors. So the, and even uh, like the Gamlin Egyptian Violet, we've all seen it. It has uh, way, way, way more pigmentation. I mean, like orders of magnitude more. Because, uh, well, think of a, one is a steak and the other one is a hot dog. The steak is literally, it's the meat, right? Whereas the hot dog is eyeballs and feet and whatever else they kind of picked up off the floor. Not that we don't love hot dogs, but there's a difference. And that's why hot dogs cost what they cost and steaks cost what they cost. And uh, I've, I've tried at least, actually, Sam's Mini Painting, I even have at least one or two videos now just comparing uh, dioxazine violet, because that, that's the name of the pigment. And when you see the other, there's actually a, a very specific one where I, I think I test about four of them together. And there is definitely a difference between them, no doubt about it. There. Now the Fanchon Red slash Naphthol Red, that I haven't quite seen a difference. So that's, uh, and not, it's not necessarily true 100% across the board because uh, comparing the Naphthol, and that's another recent video that I did, wasn't seeing the, the kind of difference that I would uh, see with, say, the Egyptian Violet versus any other dioxazine Violet. That's why uh, Egyptian Violet is the king of violets. Everything else is just purple. Uh, 
And I'm gonna maybe push that a little further up the shoulder here. Now, of course, uh, Egyptian violet, uh, and and even was that the other red? The nap? No, well, it is naphtha red, but fanchion red. Those were both in the modern color starter set. Now, brilliant yellow pale. That's another one too. So introduced to those via the modern. Also, what was the other one? Quinacrinone golden brown, which you think Egyptian violet is expensive. That quinacrinone golden brown is almost double that. Now, this should be interesting to see what happens here with our film noir. Uh, let, let's see, since this is so relatively monochrome, does it turn off our object source lighting the way it usually does? So, see, not so much there. Not so much with that object source light. But how's about we try a different Saruman here? Do the same thing. Oops, that's a little different, isn't it? There's a big time color slash temperature contrast there that we did not see with the other one because the other one, again, it's a little bit more on the muted side. Not We don't have this kind of intense color contrast. So this right here, it really is kind of more of a value contrast. Now, Bithron, that's, uh, well, there's just so many, so many things that I love about the 3D printing and no mold lines, certainly one of them. Hashtag no mold lines. And usually no gaps either because they tend to be one-piece sculpts. Let me try and carry that light over this way a little bit. Anything? Uh, yeah, let me let me throw a little bit of this uh, lighter neutral gray on the horse's mane in a few places here. There. All right, we're pretty good up on the top portion. I don't think I want to lighten up that anymore. Let's see if I can get a little something here on the cheekbone. Also, going to throw a little more light on the armor down in there, also on his hand. And that's uh, that well, Grand Oracle. That's I kind of experienced that. That's for sure. Uh, with with the trees, because uh, I think I was able to scale up some miniatures to basically be well, uh, some dryads to be tree and or uh, ant wives, and then some uh, some trees that would have been too big for. For MESBG, I was able to get those kind of scaled down a little bit more. We'll try to get a couple of the lightest lights on the main here, just in a few areas. Down there, and maybe then that's it. might come back here. Where's, where's my uh, some of the black, some of the indigo. Yeah, let's break that down too. The one thing I was a little bit bummed is that they did not have the indigo fast mat. But again, if, if one day we're able to just mix that ourselves, well, we will have indigo, some form of alkid indigo. I guess that's going to be called alkindigo. Oh, we never did get any dark back here. Now I'm going to take some of that 
neutral gray here again. And that's going to go over here. And we'll take our blending brush to that. Yeah, why, why would I sit there and struggle with a whole bunch of layers and stuff when all I have to do is just kind of take this brush here, plop it on here like so. Especially in a hard to reach zone like that. 